now. And uh, just so this is uh, for, for people who are not able to make this time slot. Um, and for those just tuning in, we've just done some introductions and talked about the May meeting being uh, AOT uh, focused. So look forward to that. The, um, we talked about the new RFC process that's looking to be merged soon. And uh, any, any other uh, announcements or discussion topics before we jump into Suyan's presentation? I wanted to ask Jason um, regarding the AOT. So are we focusing on one specific RFC or on all three or four that are currently out there? That's a good question. Uh, what um, I think we're, we're we're Sorry, open to either, essentially. Yeah, we, which are the four, the four RFCs? I am just... Uh... So, so Giuseppe, you, you, uh, yours. Then mm -hmm. there is, to my knowledge, the ST Micro. Right, OK. And, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. TO Munich also has uh, one or two proposals which go in this direction. OK, I was not aware of this uh, this last one. I, I, I knew about the ST and, and I was not aware about the one that I published, but I didn't know that were other proposals. Okay, okay, I have a look at them. But I mean, yeah, the, it, the idea would, would be, my idea at least was to come up with a, at least opinions about the interface, which seem, which is where I guess there are the different use cases for different people like ST will have their own use cases and uh, we will have our own use cases and stuff like that. So that, that's, that's gonna be a bit controversial. So it would be nice to have a um, face-to-face -face discussion uh, about the, the the public interface. So what we want right. to expose to the average user. They better they buy the RFCs. Uh, that, that's, yeah, but, but yeah, of course we can we can discuss uh, on the it, specific it, RFC. Or... It, it might be nice just to have someone give an overview of the four RFCs at the meeting so that everyone understands okay. what they are and where they're coming from. So like have a, have, have a higher level overview before diving into say the interface or into something else so that there's a just kind of like a general picture of what the okay. RFCs are out there. And it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a deep dive, but just to kind of give everyone an understanding of, of, of where everything is and so that we can all be on the same page. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It makes absolutely sense. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely, it's absolutely, yeah, I, it's, it's the same thing to do, to give a bit of overview of what, different people are working on and to, yeah, and then to discuss the, the interface, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's really great, because especially in this topic, it's really hard to keep up. For me, it's almost a half day job just to keep up with all the postings with regards to the AOT. <laughs> Which yeah, is exactly- yeah, it, it is, it is, you're right. Which is exactly why I think this is useful to have a higher bandwidth discussion. So great feedback. I guess we'll we'll work to find a volunteer to go over the four RFCs, um, or or maybe a combination of volunteers, and then uh, to 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 dive into Giuseppe's user facing API. Um, was there a particular one you wanted to go over, Michael? Or Michael, is that uh, good for you? That's perfectly fine as you have written down. Okay, perfect, great. Any other topics before we jump in to Sian's? Awesome. Well, Suyon, uh, I'll leave the floor to you and uh, I'll stop sharing here. And uh, really looking forward to hearing about uh, the uh, latest updates on Tensor IR and upstreaming work. Okay, thank you, Jason. And Jason just told me that there is a meeting today, so I, I have no time to prepare a presentation and, a mix, and I didn't make any slides. Oh, so no I worries. No worries. To, uh, Oh, you're also really uh, yeah, pretty guess, quiet. So if you could maybe move the mic closer, if that's at all possible, that might help. Okay. You're, you're audible, try. it's just uh, a little harder. Is this okay? I can hear you. I don't know if ever anyone else Okay, I can problems. change. I will change the Mac. Oh, that's better there, actually. Hello, is that okay? Perfect, thanks. Is so, that okay? That's be much better, yes. Okay. 
Yeah, I just changed the microphone. Okay, so should should I give a big picture of the Tensor IR? I think I, I think I need to do it. Yeah, it'd be great to walk through the you know the high level context uh, for for people like myself who are coming into this. Yeah, so I can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's some slides that I make before. So I will talk about so I will talk about the tensor IR briefly so that everyone knows about the big picture and the motivation and some key, key elements. So the tensor, the basic motivation of the tensor IR is to solve the problem of the auto tensorization. So today there's more hardware uh, hardware in, instructions or we call the tensor intrinsic. So that we will need to use some schedule or automatic schedule techniques to build, to make full use of these uh, accelerators instructions. So that we will see that there's an element of tensorized program. It needs optimize the loop nesting. Of course, we need that every tensor program needs the loop nesting. And also the key idea is, uh, the key element is the multi-dimension data load, multi-dimension data load and uh, some multi-dimension tensorized computation. So here is a, a example of the tensor core. Uh, each instruction load six by 16, uh, 16 by 16 uh, data and uh, do computation for 16 by 16 elements. So it is different from the uh, normal, program that usually use a scholar computation. So here's two uh, existing work and uh, the left one is the current TVM just to make the scholar body as the first, first citizen. So that we, if we need to use a high level, high dimensional uh, tensor intrinsic, so we just need to match the scholar body. And that is a difficult thing for us to match. But on the right one is something like a uh, like file just to make top down. Uh, and the problem is also obviously, uh, it cannot, it can only handle some simple, simple workloads such as the Matmo, but it cannot generally use some intrinsic or the, the other uh, hardware instructions. So the, ten, the basic idea of the tensor is to divide and solve, or we call it divide and conquer. Just to make the outside loop nesting and the tensorized body separate so that we can just uh, uh, optimize both of them independently. What does that mean? Just to see the, this, is, uh, this program, a simple, um, matrix math location. And we can just uh, make it uh, as two parts, the loop outside loop nasty, 16 by 16 by 16, and the tensorized body, four by four by four tensorized body. And we do, don't care about how the tensorized body computes. We can use the Scala units or we can use some instructions. It both are okay, just uh, make it uh, as a unit. It's a whole unit. So the, we call it a block. A block will give some uh, read-write region and it will do something like, uh, it will uh, just uh, compute, see, use the data from A and B, buffer A and B. And we don't care how it do this computation. And we just make sure that we give you, uh, give the block the data and it will return the answer. So that we will just uh, uh, make the problem easy. First, we will uh, optim optimize the outside loop nesting so that we can just uh, don't care the, how the block does and just uh, uh, split fields and something like uh, ordinary, uh, usually optimization. And also after the loop nesting optimization, we can care about the block how we do some, uh, just a micro, you can call it a microkernel or a block. It will 
how it compute a four by four by four math more. We can use some tensorized body, just like if we have an accelerator, we can do this. We can use the tensor intrinsic. Or if we do not have it, we can just call back to a scalar the computation. This is our key idea to make the uh, tensorize the body and the loop nesting independently. So it's uh, just uh, an example. Uh, also, there's uh, some design detailed design goals. The, the zero design goals is just to make the tensorized computation as uh, our first class citizen. And we do not only use we can we cannot only use the uh, Scala computation, but also use some uh, tensorized uh, tensorized computation. Just like we can make a four by four by four block as a, a schedule unit, or we can just make a sixteen by sixteen by sixteen, just like a tensor core as a, a schedule unit, so that we can just match the uh, shape of the tensor intrinsic at the first step, rather than just, uh, uh, rather than uh, after pushing stuff, split fusing, and then the at tensorize at, at the last step. We can just make the tensorize at to the first step, which makes us much more easy to match or something replace the tensor intrinsic. Also, just uh, the second design goal uh, is the, just um, isolate the internal computation, the tensorized body for the external loops. We use some block signatures to show how the block computes and what does it, what data it need and what data it produces. Uh, the block signature basically contains just uh, a right. Something like we have the iteration domains and tell the blocks how many iterations it needs, just like, and what's the iteration type. Maybe the data dependence, data parallel, or maybe it's, it, it is a reflection axis. Also, a block, the important thing is the block have its produced and the consumer regions. Each block will declare that how, how many regions it read and write. For this information, we can just build a dependency graph from one block to, another, to others, okay? So with these signatures, we do not care the block, the block bodies if we just do a scheduling outside the block. We can just make a block as a black box. The only information we need is how it Iterators, uh, iterations, or how is how many data uh, it consume and produce. And also another thing is that we just make the block as the, the basic. So what does that mean? A block will contains the iteration domains that it need. We will just we can just declare a block to declare the computation. On this slide, we will talk about the TE and the, uh, something relationship between TE and TR and tensor R. In TE, we just uh, use the shape to declare how many how large the data it will consume or produce. And in TR, we just uh, make a block. It is a block uh, iteration. And we will just make this six, uh, 64 as the iteration domain. With this signature, we can just uh, uh, complete the loop nesting. It is a, also it is a default loop nesting with 16 to make sure that the tensor IR is the correct function. Also, uh, the I, I have uh, I have told that the block is the schedulable unit schedule unit of the tensor, so that uh, 
we can just uh, make a uh, block rather than current stage. In TE, we have stage and uh, the OP, but in tensor I, we only have block. A block is a scheduled unit, so that we just can we can just uh, make a block. Be, uh, uh, for example, uh, complete or something like uh, compute in line. We just uh, make a block in line, or can be computed at, at something else somewhere else. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. C can you explain again why the inner block, block B, is not schedulable? Yeah, of course. The block B has the, uh, let's look at the block B. The block B contains only one uh, intrinsic instructions, this, this line. Uh, sorry. If you, you can see my mouse? Yes, I can. Oh. Yeah, it is the only body inst instructions, right? If we just uh, look, look at these instructions, we do not know how the instructions does a computation. It can read the, the whole, it can read the whole region of A and B, or it can, on, it can read only one element of A and B. We do not know. So that it is a not schedulable block. But the block B is not schedulable. Uh, that means the block B in, inside the block B it is not schedulable. But if we look at the root block, we can just make the block B compare at, at the block C. You mean my idea? Um, yep. It is so, just as like some hierarchical scheduling. We can make the block B as a one unit. We can just move the block or split to use the outside luminescent I. But we cannot change the inner, uh, inter block, the inter body of the block B. That is called the block B is not schedulable. Okay. Yeah, just to um, add something. Um, the basic scheduling unit of TensorFlow is a block. A block, what is a block? The block is an isolation unit that we can view at a black box. So there are some tags on the black box, black box saying, okay, this black box will write the region of like some buffer, some region of some buffers. And the way it writes it is to using, expose some iterators for others to manipulate. For example, here we have a like spatial iterator which can be parallelized or reordered and uh, the scheduler do not necessarily have to know the inter like the inside information of a block. For example, in this case, block B has a like, very magical uh, intrinsic called my fancy vector at one. Um, the scheduler do not necessarily have to know this. This is, this is opaque to the scheduler. So even if block B is not scheduled because it is opaque, we can schedule like the loops on top of block B, like loop I. And okay, so it, so it would be possible to unroll loop I, for example. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. So, um, um, a good um, a design design choice of having an isolated block unit is like we can actually uh, we can actually like um, if we have a microkernel, like we have a um, microkernel of doing two batch maximals of using some using some like. ASM assembly, um, we can actually just isolate it in that block and we do not have to know what is inside, but we can schedule it outside. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks to you. So uh, just uh, like add something, if we tensorize the uh, block, if we tensorize the, in the tensor, uh, we can still use schedule the tensorized part. It is the uh, new feature of the tensor IR. So we can just uh, tensorize at the first of the schedule. Okay, let's continue. So just let's talk about something like transformation, or we call it schedule. The only thing we, 
we are interested in is the block, sig uh, block signature, including its iterators and uh, its access regions. It's called access regions, read write regions. And we, during the transformations, uh, we do not care about the block body. I have repeated this so, for so many times. So this enables loop transformations of the tensorized computation body. Just to make a, uh, we can tensorize a block and we can still uh, transformation, transform some outside luminosity for, of the block. Uh, the validation is not so, impo not so important, uh, but just uh, take a brief see that uh, a block contains something, uh, uh, contains the required iteration domains. And then we can use this to check if uh, our tensor R is valuable. For example, this K, the, the X turned off K is 16, so it is correct. But uh, in this example, the correct, uh, the X turned off KO is only eight, which will mismatch the requirement of 16. So it is a wrong tensor R. So we can just make, we can just use something like uh, the iteration domains to validate uh, whether it is a correct tensor. But this is, it is not so important for, for us. Yeah, also the block information itself contains, so we can only with use the simple block and we can complete the default for loop nesting because we have required this, uh, loop, uh, outside loop nesting regions. Okay. I think uh, it is something like a brief picture, uh, the big picture of cancer. Yeah. So let's focus on the, uh, so before focusing on the uh, upstream plan, uh, anyone has questions? One question, uh, I don't know if you're going to get into this, is, is backwards compatibility and, uh, you know, if what the status or changes looks like for anyone who has TensorIR kernels or, you know, TensorIR passes and, and how that interfaces with the new block system. Okay, good questions. Uh, for now, we just uh, use the, we can use the hybrid, uh, sorry, not hybrid, just a TVM script as uh, the import as an input of the tensor R. Also, we can just use the, still use the TE to import a tensor R just like this. We can just use the uh, left uh, T exp tensor expressions to build up tensor R on the right. It is okay. So we still can use the, the relay to, to topi to TE and uh, to the IR and build on the devices. It's okay. And as for the parts, we just lower tensor, tensor R to the, uh, stage after the storage flatten, the current part, there's a part currently in TVM called storage flatten. We just lower the cancer IR at the stage of after the storage flatten. So we can reuse the rest of the passes. Also we can, in the future, we may rewrite some passes and uh, uh, separate the original TVM TIR and our tensor IR. It may enable some new features, but uh, as for the back compact compatibility, we still can uh, make the tensor act can be built. Okay, thanks. I have another question. So um, maybe a more fundamental one. So for example, on this slide, you could have on the left TE on the right TIR. So I'm not 100% clear on the terminology. Is tensor IR like a Python interface to create a TIR graph, or is it somehow an extension of the TIR language? Uh, I think it is extension of the TIR language. Uh, part of the TSR is based on the TIR, and we still uh, introduce some new elements, new data structure like block. Uh, and the, the test, the importing of TSR is enables an IR to IR scheduling. 
uh, as we can yeah. see that the before we just uh, use the schedule tree, we do we do scheduling and uh, uh, apply primitives on us uh, schedule tree so that uh, after all the scheduling operators, we lower the schedule tree into TRS, right? Yeah, then the Tesla is that uh, IR to IR scheduling. For each primitives, we just uh, input a tensor, tensor IR and output a tensor IR so that we can print the tensor IR or get the tensor IR at each of the scheduling. Okay, so it's more than an alternative to hybrid script or IR builder. It's really a superset of the TIR language. Yeah, it's a superset of a TIR language and also a superset of the current scheduling. Okay. TSR is not only IR, but also IR with all the schedulability. Yeah, so I think a good way that I have been conceptualizing it is TE is sort of has been an interface for a long time. The idea is that you use it to write a kernel, but TE is not the IR really. Like the first thing you do is you take the like TE stage graph and you schedule it down to TIR. The problem is it's sort of been a one shot process where we expand the TE to TIR with a fixed set of primitives and there's no extensibility. Um, in order to address this, I feel like what Siwan and Dunru and a bunch of other people working on is they were taking TIR today and tensor IR is sort of TIR 2.0. The idea is that you add some new constructs that'll like improve schedulability. They're gonna change the scheduling API to be more flexible so you can add new schedule primitives. Um, and scheduling in this case is sort of a TIR to TIR function. Uh, you can you know wrap them up and build new scheduling primitives uh, and then improving the compiler pipeline to take advantage of the new features. Um, and I think you'll get a subset of the IR is what Siwan's saying after storage flatten, which allows you to kind of keep backwards compatibility for code generation or anything else, it sits at the back of the compiler, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, great point, Jared. I uh, just um, a few things to add up. So there are three pain points right now on tensor expression. Uh, the first point is extensibility. Like uh, right now, we are rely on a very restrictive schedule tree, and every time we want to add a schedule print, it is super painful. Like loop splitting, conditional loop splitting is not working. Mm, Really probably right now. Uh, so when we when we like encounter like those per imperfect loops, there will be performance loss, and the problem has been there for years. And um, the the second point is um, tensorization. Like right now, T Suyuan is actually the, the the primary author of tensorization in on TE too. So uh, he has a lot to talk about. Um, tensorization on T is a bit ad hoc, we cannot schedule those parts if we tensorize it afterwards and not quite flexible. And, uh, and the third, third point is like, um, mm, what is the third point? I don't remember. Uh, the, the third point is um, right now, um, we only support scheduling on those, those T like very regular, like um, gather style, uh, yeah, get a style um, computation. So what if we have a sparse workload that we, we we want to tune up on? Like those sparse workloads might be just written in hybrid script format and uh, we are unable to tune it with our current system. And with TIR, this is, um, scheduling is basically just IR to IR transformation, the simplest IR to IR transformation. And we are able to tune those irregular workloads with our like auto TIR infrastructure without too many, without problem. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks to you. Any problems Any or any questions? Okay, let's move to the current stage. We can see the uh, upstreaming stage at this RFC or GitHub issue. We have, uh, there's two major milestones. 
uh, yeah, two major milestones. The first one is the data structures and some um, some build uh, build uh, infrastructures and some schedule infrastructures. The da core data structure is called M1A, and all of these are finished, including the box structures and the the new TVM parser, TVM script parsers. And the M1B is just about the scheduling, which are majorly done by Junzu, <laughs> I think. And it including some uh, scheduled states, scheduled data structures, and, and also some ETA farm map per, uh, updated by Bohan. And also, the current stage is at the M1C. M1C is about the, how lower in a tensor IR to the flattened IR. So it, it contains some part some parts, uh, lower the in, init blocks and uh, LCA detections and something like this. And the last step is the buffer flattening. I think uh, all these code are ready and we are running our inter internal code review. And I think uh, M1C can be done in uh, in this week or the, or, the last, or the next week, I think. Oh, yeah, so the right. next... Oh, sorry, would you like to zoom yeah. in a little bit? It is the font is... Right okay, now. okay. Uh, maybe it's because my screen is 4K. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I think it is clear. And the last step is M2A. M2A includes some uh, schedule primitives like uh, the uh, split fields, computer ads, computer inline, and so many others. Uh, note that our primitives are decoupled so that we can uh, write each of the primitive dependently. It's also a new feature of the tensor that we can just uh, make much easier to add a new primitives. Oh, okay. Um, after the two milestones, M1 and M2, uh, we can use the tensor IR to um, build some workload, such as the convolution or Matmore. And we are um, we plan to finish it uh, in one month or at, at least uh, uh, before July. Yeah, nice. That's the current stage. Yes, after uh, the infrastructure part is almost done, and uh, except for M one C, some uh, which is half halfway halfway down to we are doing some really rigorous and harsh internal review with there right now. Um, after after the infrastructure is done, we can like submit those schedule primitives separately in a scape, like parallel way because we do not have to deal with schedule tree anymore. And um, if anyone is interested in adding new schedule primitives like store ads or conditional load splitting, we are more than welcome. And yeah. Welcome everyone to review and review our PRs and also add new primitives or add new features to the tensor AR. Cool. One question is uh, documentation. Where, uh, I guess, is it after M2A that you plan on uh, putting together more documentation around how to use this in architecture? Yeah. Um, uh, we will try to finish our document after the whole M1. So okay. it may be done by after the M1C merged. Yeah, and um, we are trying to finish a research paper too on this topic. Um, and also documentation is really a strong need in our, in our community. Um, and um, we are, um, we really care about documentation very much. And, Welcome to review and rephrase and help revise. Thank you very much. Great. Any other questions for Sion? 
So with regards to the uh, scheduling or the for loops, basically. So with TE, I tried once to have a different uh, for loop scheme than a rectangular pattern. Is it somehow possible to change to uh, like uh, go in a triangular pattern uh, th through a tensor or through an array using tensor IR? Um, just to confirm, is that a triangular pattern or re re rectangular pattern? Well, what I mean is, if you have a double for loop, and in a for loop, uh, the uh, the variable start or end variable is dependent on the running variable of the outer for loop, is this possible with uh, tensor IR? So I haven't seen the, this in TE yet. I see. Um, so um, so uh, in M one B, we have several PRs for arithmetic analysis, um, basically like um, integral set analysis on semi-affine um, semi maps. And as long as the, um, I think the block is schedulable as long as, long as um, those um, loop, uh, block bindings are in semi-affine. Well, I think there's two questions, right? Because like you can always write the triangular pattern at the TIR level. The, the, but the question then is like, do you want to schedule it as well? If you don't want to schedule it, then it's really easy. And you can do that today even. Uh, it might not be convenient to do yet. Like, I think there's still some work on the convenience factor. But like in TIR, you could construct a fragment of IR that does that. Um, I think John Roo's point is that the way the schedule matching works is it requires some constraints on the arithmetic to be able to do the matching and scheduling. Okay. If I don't know, if that doesn't answer your question, we can... Uh, to, uh, discuss it more, but so um, it requires like basically like similar to polyhedral models that use a semi semi affine relationship between the loop variables and block variables. And if you okay. write a snippet of TIR that's valid TIR but not schedulable, then does that mean that cogent still can function, but you just don't get the auto tensorization or or many of the passes? Um. If if there is a block there which is not in that format, which is not in semi-affine uh, map, and the block becomes opaque, and we cannot schedule that single block, but we are we are still able to schedule those loops on top of the block and other blocks too. So uh, even if it is not schedulable, we can do cogeneration without problem. Okay, great. Yeah, my point is like <clears throat> the idea is to have an escape hatch in this case, where like you can write TIR code that does what you want. Um, but like the the mm, polyhedral model or like uh, even the scheduling, there's constraints because if, as you get the arithmetic more complex, like you need to be able to analyze the arithmetic to sort of understand the geometric relationship between the variables, if you will. Um, and then you need some kind of like theory and constraints on what kind of arithmetic is allowed where. Otherwise, it's very hard to automate the transformations. Um, Polyhedral, like traditionally, a lot of compilers just kind of give up. Um, you know, if you step outside the polyhedral model, you, you get stuck. Um, and there's some workarounds and stuff. But I think the idea here is that like the opaque blocks at least allow you to have an escape hatch um, as you're working on some of these kernels. Um, but then the scheduling is another question. Like if you want automation, you have to fit into a narrow API. And I, I think one of the other things John Roos talked about, which I don't know if anyone talked about this morning, was kind of... Um, in generalizing the TE patterns away from just maybe scatter or something to provide other primitives that have nice scheduling behavior uh, based on like kind of patterns that people want. So I think that's something else we could consider as we go forward is maybe new primitives that have like, um, you know, sort of specialized scheduling and then maybe there's a triangle primitive or something. Um, I, I don't know what the use cases people want most are, but. Yeah, so the basic idea here is that block isolation, just uh, which means like, um, even if it is not a scatter pattern, it might be a scatter pattern on other patterns. We just uh, we just put the right tag on the block, like which region does it read, which region does it write, what are block bindings. We can um, properly schedule it, um, no matter what pattern it is. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> a great question. Any other questions? I know we're over time technically, but it's a great discussion.
maybe oh. one last thing. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Crook, I think Chris mentioned last time that there, I mean, it's more an organizational part, not TENS IR. So Chris mentioned last time that there might be uh, sub subgroup meetings for different topics. So is this still in consideration? Yeah, I think uh, it's something we've talked about quite a bit. I, th I think we're looking for a little uh, more leadership or interest and in, in people stepping up to say, yes, please, uh, we want to talk about X, Y, Z. Um, so definitely, if, if there is interest, let us know and, and we can either uh, help someone step up or, or we can potentially kick it off on our side. Yeah, I think the other thing that would be good from my perspective is that because we're spread across so many time zones, um, we could maybe move some of the meetings into like, depending on who wants to attend into slots that allow more variance. Cause I know like if you're in Asia, it's the, what times work really well are different. If you're in Europe, it's different. Uh, like for example, a bunch of people in uh, uh, OctoML or like West coast, Cal, you know, California, Seattle people, and the people don't like getting up early. So I think if we can find pairings of people that can find scheduling more independently to that might help. Cause then we can talk more um, without having to like, get a global hard sync on everyone's time zones. And um, especially because I know there's some pairings, like, you know, Andrew's been working with the ARM folks on, um, you know, embedded stuff. And, you know, I think, for example, a lot of people doing the auto scheduling are in Asia. And so I, I think we can kind of, that, that's one pro that I, I thought of uh, in, in splitting off into subgroups. Michael, do you have a particular request or idea there? I think, uh... I mean, the two things I'm currently interested in is, are the AOT and Tensor IR. Yeah, so I think topics. maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can talk about it this week, like offline on Discuss or something about having a Tensor IR meeting group as things start to get upstream. Because I think there will be a lot of interest once these last couple PRs land um, in terms of like using the new capabilities. Uh, I know there already is at Octo, and I assume there is from other folks outside of Octo. And I'll, I'll record those, and uh, I'll talk to Chris about them, and we'll try to get some discuss. Uh, and, and do you think the frequency is good, Michael, in terms of monthly cadence, or, or would you like to see these subgroups meet more commonly? I think the frequency would be kind of okay. So it okay. really depends on the community, I think. And we can discuss that on Discuss as well. Okay, any other topics? Great point, Michael. Well, with that, thank you so much, Sion, for uh, staying up uh, past midnight for us here and uh, really great content. Looking forward to seeing uh, Tensor IR improvements continue to land. Really great work. And with that, thank we'll uh, we'll go ahead and, and end it here and I'll post the video online and, and we'll link to it from Discuss uh, topic as well. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. That was fun. It was good to see the overview. Great to see everyone. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 See you.